you're going to give us the latest on the 2023 uncommitted players because there are still a few that we've got to work through here. So let's start with the top guy. We mentioned it. Nicholas Harbour. He was recently in Eugene visiting the Ducks. So where do things stand with him one day from signing day? Well, unless things change <laughs> over the next, where are we at, uh, 20 hours now? Something I like, like where South Carolina's position wow. for Nicholas Harbour here down the stretch of his recruitment. It's the program where I think he has the best relationships with coaching staff, players on the team, and recruits. Likes the track and field program over there and just feels very comfortable in Columbia. Now he's coming off a fantastic visit to Oregon, and I'm told that the Harbor camp still remains in communication with the Ducks. Mike, Slox, Mike Loxley in Maryland looked like they had some momentum brewing in this recruitment in December. Our Jeff Ehrman from Inside MD Sports says that Mike Loxley scheduled to talk with Nicholas Harbor again this evening. So even though Nicholas Harbor may have a good idea where he wants to go, and I think South Carolina is well positioned there, as you guys know, <laughs> if those lines of communication are still open, at any time a recruitment could pivot and end up somewhere else. And Oregon certainly has a lot to offer in this recruitment from a track and field standpoint, football standpoint, Nike athlete potential type standpoint. And then uh, Maryland, the hometown school, both his parents have graduate degrees there. He knows that staff well. There's a lot of familiarity. And their track coach was the 2012 United States Olympic track team track coach. So they check a lot of boxes as well. And Michigan's still trying to hang around in this recruitment as well. But as we record right now, South Carolina is the school that I'm liking. Steve, obviously, Harbor, super fast, right? And, and the guy that might be faster than him in the class of 2023, Roderick Pleasant. Pac-12 school is kind of the buzz with him heading into Wednesday. Where do things stand in that recruitment as we approach the buzzer? Yeah, maybe two to six years down the road. You're talking about Nicholas Harbor winning the 200-meter uh, world <laughs> gold medal and Roderick Pleasant winning the 100-meter gold medal. Uh, uh, this one's a USC Oregon battle down the stretch here. And, uh, you know, talking to my colleagues, Greg Biggins and Brandon Huffman, there was a lot of USC buzz at the Polynesian Bowl. But I know that Oregon is still recruiting this young man extremely hard. Again, all the track stuff uh, is in play for Roderick Pleasant regarding the Oregon Ducks. Now, USC, as Brandon Huffman reminded me yesterday, their track program certainly not chop liver. But uh, Oregon uh, has, continues to have dialogue with Roderick Pleasant today. They're still very much in it, and that's a recruitment that I find to still be sort of up in the air. All right. As we just told you, Deuce Robinson may not sign tomorrow. So you got USC, Georgia, Oregon, Texas, and <clears throat> Alabama all awaiting the five stars decision. If he doesn't sign tomorrow, what's next for him? I'm not expecting him to sign. Okay. You know, Blair Angulo obviously had the report yesterday that he may not sign. I talked to a source today that tells me that they're not expecting him to sign, that he just needs more time, which you feel good about Georgia's position. But if he needs more time, if you're the other schools, USC particularly, you're glad that you're maybe going to get more time mm -hmm. or the Texas Longhorns or maybe even perhaps Oregon. He has one more visit in play if he chooses to use it. Uh, late riser in our final top 247 rankings was the offensive lineman, Chimdi Ono. He is the fifth highest ranked undecided prospect. All eyeballs on what he's going to do tomorrow. But you put in a crystal ball for Penn State. Why are you leaning Nittany Lions here? Yeah, my colleague and I, our colleague, mm -hmm. Brian Doan and I, tag teaming that story there. And we like Penn State for Chimdi Ono. You know, it took a late official visit to Ole Miss. The Rutgers was an early contender. But this one's really coming down to Penn State and Michigan State. And we like the Nittany Lions position with him, Phil Trotline, offensive line coach. Uh, leading the recruitment there and when he took his official visit he got a chance to really see how he fit in with the players on the team spend a lot of time with the guys and I think he liked uh, how he meshed with those guys Penn State on the cusp of maybe the college football playoff again you know another New Year's six win for James Franklin and that staff and they're quietly putting together one of the best offensive line classes in the country and if they could add Chimdi to that which I think they will as the crystal ball says that'd be a heck of a close for James Franklin and Penn State. All right, we'll see what happens there. Finally, Andrew, I'm going to toss this question to you. See, as you said, we all, all the colleagues, everybody works together on this. The Harris twins, they're apparently going to make their decision tomorrow, and the crystal balls are kind of split between Maryland and UCF for what many, I think, believe is just a package deal, but what's the latest there? Well, I got a text from a source involved in the recruitment an hour before we got on the show. He said this thing's going to be wild. It, it could go a variety Ooh. of di different directions, and you're right. They're twins. Mm -hmm. They've been together their whole lives, grew up in Jamaica. Sounds like I, I wouldn't rule out one of them signing one school and the other picking the other school. I think that scenario is in play. I did a quick research. I can't <laughs> recall that ever happening. We you know package deals when it's friends and high school teammates, but two brothers that are in the same class, the same age, 
born minutes apart, picking different schools would be out there. So I, I think UCF and Maryland are the two they're considering. Uh, the Knights were expecting them to be on campus this past Friday. I was actually in Orlando. I didn't see the Twins there, so we'll see. <laughs> Maryland, it, it, their lights out at the buzzer with Mike Loxley. Now you said one could go one way and one could go the other, but you didn't specify who, where. where? So in your know? game of where the Harris Twins are potentially leading, which fan base should get excited about which brother? I think Andrew for UCF and then okay. Maryland for, for Michael. But it could flip, right? You, you know how it is once we – I think they had to make some more phone calls, talk things over with the parents. But UCF's pushing the, the move to the Big 12 big time. They're also pushing that mm -hmm. Gus Malzahn, the only active coach that's beat Nick Saban three times. Two great prospects, two raw prospects. They spent most of their childhood playing soccer, so football is, is definitely new to them. Excited to see where they end up. Well, there are just two of a handful of prospects taking their decision down to signing day. So a few programs will still hope to add to their class tomorrow. <laughs>